The Assembly Committee on Government Affairs will come to order. Madam Secretary, please call roll. Assemblywoman Anderson. Present. Assemblywoman Black. Assemblywoman Brown May. Here. Assemblywoman Considine. Present. Assemblywoman Dickman. Here. Assemblywoman Duran. Here. Assemblyman Ellison. Present. Assemblywoman Martinez. Present. Assemblyman Matthews. Here. Assemblyman MacArthur. Assemblywoman Thomas. Here. Assemblywoman Torres. Here. Chair Flores. President, thank you, Madam Secretary. Select all members are present. We have a quorum. Uh, good morning, members. I hope you have a great you had a great weekend and had an opportunity to relax a bit and spend some time with your loved ones. That's important. Don't forget to do that every time you can. Um, for those of you following us virtually, I, I want to uh, remind you that uh, all of us have a very unique setup, which is why you'll see us looking in different directions. It's probably because we have different monitors and or are looking at written documents. We don't do that to be disrespectful. Uh, members, as always, I want to remind you to please keep your microphone on mute and your camera on at all times unless you are speaking. Obviously, you must mute yourself. And uh, if you have an emergency, just give me a quick heads up um, and go ahead and sh shut off your camera. Um, for those of you following us virtually and wish to uh, speak uh, for public comment, please know we'll be doing that at the end of the meeting. And with that, uh, on the agenda, we have Assembly Bill 184. We have our very own Speaker Frierson and our Lieutenant Governor Kate Marshall joining us this morning. Um, thank you both for joining us. And at this time, I'd like to open up the hearing on Assembly Bill 184. Good morning and welcome to you both. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the Assembly Committee on Governor Affairs. For the record, my name is Jason Frierson, representing Assembly District 8, uh, also the Speaker of the Nevada State Assembly. I'm pleased to be here along with our Lieutenant Governor, Kate Marshall, and Christina Lopez from her office. Uh, we are here to present to you uh, AB 184. This bill creates the Office of Small Business Advocate within the uh, Office of the uh, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, just a little background, um, in, in 2019, under better, obviously better economic times, the premise of this policy uh, that's been discussed since last session was to connect small businesses with the assistance they needed to navigate various intricacies of starting and running a business, whether that's understanding state filing requirements, federal filing requirements, licenses, permit certificates, renewal requirements. Uh, the goal of this office is simply to be an advocate and a resource for our small businesses. Uh, per data from the U.S. Small Business Administration in 2020, Nevada was home to over 283,300 small businesses that employed over 500,000 Nevadans. Uh, that's 42% of our entire workforce. However, as many of you know, new businesses often face uh, stark realities of low survival rates. <clears throat> On average, uh, while 68% of new small businesses last at least two years, uh, the five-year survival rate is uh, about 49%, and the 10-year survival rate is about 34%. Uh, with a large percentage of our constituents employed in small businesses, I believe it's in our best interest to ensure that they are successful. Uh, the economic impacts of, of COVID-19, of course, are also no surprise to us here in Nevada. Um, per the United States Small Business Administration, in April of 2020, 51% of small businesses nationally were negatively impacted by COVID-19. In November of 2020, uh, these numbers improved with 29% of small businesses still reporting they were negatively impacted by the pa pandemic. However, our food, entertainment, and education industries have been hit the hardest and are the slowest to recover. Nationally, 84% of small businesses in the accommodation and food industry reported in April that they were all negatively impacted by COVID-19. We know that those industries are the lifeline of our Nevada economy. Our small businesses need us more than ever. With the influx of federal, state, and local resources available during these tough times, 
I see no better time for this office to exist to help Nevadans navigate through these difficult times and find the resources in a central location uh, to, to have the greatest chance of success. Uh, so with your permission, Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to turn this over to our Lieutenant Governor, uh, Kate Marshall and Ms. Lopez. This bill was introduced at their request. We have been working on this conceptually since last session. And uh, with your permission also, because the Lieutenant Governor is gonna be um, uh, taking the lead on, on, on shepherding this bill through, um, if, if it's okay with the permission of the chair to hand it off to our Lieutenant Governor, and then I will tend to some speaker responsibilities and um, would be happy to answer any follow-up questions, although um, AB 184 is in excellent hands with our Lieutenant Governor. Uh, thank you, Speaker Farsh, and absolutely, and good morning, Ms. Lopez, and uh, we look forward to speaking with you, uh, Lieutenant Governor Marshall, and thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Um... Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you, Chair Flores, and to the members of your committee this morning. Um, I want to thank Speaker Frierson for his leadership and also um, Leader uh, Teresa Benitez Thompson for her leadership in um, being another sponsor to this bill. Um, I mean, really, it, the fact that we are doing this together, I think, uh, is a tribute to the importance of small businesses to all of us. Um, as you know, and as the speaker has stated, our small business community has been battered by this pandemic. Um, in addition to the data that the speaker provided you, 35% of our small businesses in Nevada have permanently closed since the start of our public health crisis. The success of our small businesses rely on our ability to prepare for both risk and to have resiliency. In order for our state to build the type of organizational infrastructure that provides an adequate safety net to operate within the dynamic environment that is small business ownership. I'm sure some of the you uh, who know small business owners would understand that dynamic can uh, have its headaches. <laughs> um, we really need to have a three-pronged approach to support our small businesses, and that is in business development and regulatory measures and in advocacy. Currently, the Small Business Development Center, our SBDC, as many of you may know it, serves to increase business startups, to help them create and retain jobs, and to increase their access to capital. Uh, SBDC's mission largely fulfills the business development side of things. The second uh, prong of the approach encompasses regulatory measures, and it's an important component of the business ecosystem. Um, that is really a business and industry's uh, wheelhouse. Uh, they promote the growth of business and ensure that their legal operation ensure everyone can run smoothly. They're like the traffic cop, right? The air traffic controller to create a fair and competitive regulatory environment. But that brings me to the third prong, which is uh, a gap currently in what we provide to small businesses. Um, collectively, as uh, Speaker Frierson mentioned, small businesses make up 99% of all businesses in Nevada and over 42% of our workforce. It is an economic force that if we are going to improve and come out of this pandemic, Economically, we need to make sure that our small businesses can come out of this pandemic. So, but a small business owner, in order to operate their business and navigate through the hoops and the hurdles that ownership comes with, they need an advocate to provide them a voice in state government. They need someone that they can call that will answer the phone and help them navigate through any issues they have. So it's not just that a small business can call and we can say, look, here are these pandemic relief opportunities available to you. But they can call and we can say, okay, it looks like you need this license and we're gonna connect you with the mortgage lending place. It looks like you need this certification and we're gonna connect you with that. It looks like you're having this issue with HHS and we're going to track down the person who can help you with that. So it is a single point of contact that then connects them to their various needs. Why? Because small businesses do not have an HR department. 
They are spending all their time in that dynamic environment that is making sure that their small business runs, providing the products or the services that they are doing to the public and engaging with their community. They do not have the time to spend hours on the phone trying to track down why they can't uh, figure out what regulatory options they have or how to navigate that system. So I'd like to walk you through, if it's okay with you, I'd like to walk you through uh, a line by line of the bill itself, it's AB 184. Um, sections one through seven of the bill are definitions, okay? And I'd like to point out section six, which is that a small business is defined as 100 employees or less. This is in keeping with federal definition. Section eight of the bill creates the Office of Small Business Advocacy within the Lieutenant Governor's office. Section nine of the bill outlines the roles and expectations of small business advocacy and includes that the office will interact with state and local government agencies to address administrative regulatory enforcement functions on behalf of small businesses. Section 10 formalizes the process and scope of the office including receiving and resolving complaints, compiling and, and analyzing data, making recommendations to you legislative body on uh, problems and concerns of small businesses so that you can uh, address if, uh, better efficiencies or resources or uh, updates to law needs to occur. Section 11 of the bill authorizes the office to review requests with certain exceptions for assistance as made by small by a small business uh, regarding an interaction with the state agency. Exceptions might be, for example, if they are in a legal dispute with an agency, obviously we do not step in between that. Uh, if they have a federal issue with the EEOC, for example, with the IRS, for example, God forbid with the FBI, we will not get involved in those federal issues, okay? So there are exceptions. Um, section 12 of the bill prescribes the protocol for the office to follow when it receives a request, really placing measures. In other words, opening a, ca a case file no later than 30 days, right? Notifying the small business as to the status of their request for assistance when the case is closed, what's going on, transparency, and accountability, which I think are very, very important uh, in general, but to small businesses in particular. Uh, section 13 of the office requires the office to establish and maintain an education course. You will see in a, a proposed amendment that turns the requirement to it from a shell to a may. That is because we do not know what resources we will be provided by you, the legislature. Obviously, if we don't get any resources, we can't have a course. Um, section 14 of the bill authorizes the office to apply for gifts, grants, and contributions. This is so that uh, if the federal government should determine that they wanted to help fund this uh, um, uh, advocacy, if uh, we can apply for a grant, uh, we know that we are currently eligible. This concept is eligible for CARES Act money. Obviously, since it's not in statute, we can't apply now. Uh, but this would allow us to apply and, and provides the structure to pull the money in and have it be properly accounted for. Again, transparent so that you can see what money came in, make sure it's only used for the things that it is supposed to be used for. Um, and that's, section, that's the other part of the proposed amendment. Uh, perhaps because I was a former state treasurer, I get rather particular about how money is, uh, a pro, you know, parsed out and used. Uh, I, I like to see all the little lines and that's the language that you see there. Um, section 15 of the bill requires uh, my office to report to the legislature um, uh, annually um, so that you can then see what the office is doing, what, how many complaints they've had, what has been the resolutions of those, and that you get a picture of what uh, uh, you and, and then your constituents can have a picture of what's going on. Section 16 of the bill provides that um, records, files, and communications, whether made or received, are confidential and not public records. That's to protect the small business and also to protect the agency. 
Um, it, I, uh, Chair uh, Flores, I know that um, different committees have different views. Uh, there is a fiscal note attached to this. I did not know if you wanted me to go through the fiscal note. I am prepared to do so if you would like that. I think that will allow for that conversation to occur in the money committees and okay. us to focus on the policy. Otherwise, we're going to have two hearings today and then repeat it again with the money committee. So no need for you to do that. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. All right. Um, so then I, um, you know, I know it's so hard uh, for you guys right now in terms of how you receive uh, information about who's supporting or opposing this. Um, so uh, in the interest of efficiency, um, we prepared a letter and we sent that letter out and uh, asked people to sign on to the letter. If I could um, take your indulgence, I would like to read the letter. It is only one page and then tell you who the signatories are to the letter in the hope that that um, facilitates your understanding of who's supporting this, if that's, if, I, if that's okay with you, Chairman Flores. Please do, Lieutenant Governor. Okay, thank you. Um, dear Chairman Flores and committee members, we, the undersigned, write to express our collective support of Nevada Assembly Bill Number 184, which creates the Office of Small Business Advocacy within the Office of the Lieutenant Governor. Uh, the next paragraph is a series of statistics, which I believe if I read it, you will have heard it three times. So I'll just uh, walk through, you know, pass over that. Um, owning and operating a small business is hard work. Navigating the red tape of business ownership, coupled with the inevitable ebb and flow of greater economic forces, should not be the reason why we see storefronts go dark or businesses go under. Small business owners need a direct point of contact within state government. They often have issues that cannot be answered by online tools or website guidelines. Often such inquiries need a person to talk to for assistance on navigating regulations, licensing, receiving small business education and guidance, and locating appropriate financial resources, including relief and aid during times of crisis. Entrepreneurship is a calling. It is the creative and autonomous mindset of a small business owner that allows their ideas to come to life and the doors of yet another business to open. It is our small business owners who create and contribute to the vibrant and diverse landscape of our community. The Office of Small Business Advocacy will function as a statewide hub to provide space for collaboration and modernization in the small business community, strengthen Nevada's entrepreneurial infrastructure and support the long-term growth and resiliency of our small business owners. We strongly urge your support and look forward to the establishment of this important small business resource. Now, uh, the list of supporters in no particular order. Terry Reynolds, director, of Business and Industry State of Nevada. Michael Brown, Director, Governor's Office of Economic Development, State of Nevada. Mike Kazmierski, President and CEO of EDON. Jonas Peterson, President and CEO of Las Vegas Global Economic uh, Association, uh, LVGEA. Okay, Shawnee Coleman, Director, Community and Economic Development, Clark County. Favor Chikello, President, African American uh, Chamber of Commerce and Tourism. Amber Steidem, Vice President of Government Affairs, Henderson Chamber of Commerce. Peter Guzman, President, Latin Chamber of Commerce. Ken Evans, President, Urban Chamber of Commerce. Anne Silver, President, Reno and Sparks Chamber of Commerce. Mary Beth Seawald, President, Vegas Chamber of Commerce. Joe Cato, President, Periwinkle Group. Tom Clark, owner, Tom Clark Solutions, and the Nevada Outdoor Business Coalition. Glenn Calloway, owner, Glenn with a Y, studio. Mari Gonzalez, owner, Coolsville Tattoo. John Hope, founder, HOLO Discovery. Guys, sometimes I'm going to mispronounce these names and I really apologize. Um, I always felt as a child, my main name is Saltero. I always felt it was phonetic. And when people would mispronounce it, I would get so frustrated. I'd be like, why can't you just like, it sounded out. So I apologize upfront that now I'm doing the same with other people's names. Um, Stephanie Gillian, owner, Shadow Light Wellness. Lee Lanier, owner, Lee Lanier Paints. 
Geneva Marquez, owner, Saturation Gallery. Matthew Morgan, owner, Stinky Monkey, LLC. Derek Stonebarger, owner, operator, Rebar and Davies on Main Street. Kurt Thigpin, CEO, A Studios. And Abby Whitaker, president, Abby Agency. Two more guys, and then I'll be quiet. Amy Conley, founding principal and director of design, Tilt 23. Robin Slonina, founder and creative director, Skin City Body Painting and Events. Um, that letter, uh, if it's not already in your um, inbox, it, it will be part of the materials that you have for this bill. Um, I would like to now open it up for any, uh, well, I mean, Chair Flores, I am done with my opening remarks. Uh, so I pass it back to you. All right, thank you, uh, Lieutenant Governor. And with that, members, uh, we'll open up for questions. I do know we have a, uh, quite a few members who have some questions. So we'll start off with Assemblywoman Kansarai. Thank you, Chairman Flores, and thank you for um, presenting this bill and for the for the information. You actually answered a couple of my questions, um, but one of my questions: how how small uh, or what is the minimum amount to be a small business? I guess I'm asking: does this um, will this help micro businesses? Will it help um, gig workers or independent contractors? Will it help like you know a grandma who has um, a child care business in her house is is there a minimum level that that um, this entity will will help or just anyone who considers themselves a business uh thank you assemblywoman constantine through you chair flores to assemblywoman constantine that's a very uh, important question i appreciate it so uh the ceiling is 100 employees or less there is no floor so for example, one of the things that we've seen in this downturn is that many people were sole employees and they had such a difficult time. Many sole employees are women-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses. And um, so they would also, a, a single person who's running a business, uh, who is um, turning on the lights, turning off the lights, sweeping the floor and making it to UPS before they close, they are included. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the woman Thomas. Good morning, Chair, and thank you. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant Governor. I really do appreciate the presentation. That was extremely thorough. Um, a novice like myself, um, I got um, a lot of understanding. But I do have a question, well, a couple of questions for clarity. When we go to uh, section 11, subsection 2C, um, and my concern is for the small businesses when they do have a, a complaint or concern, um, 2C uh, indicates that the request of assistance was not filed in a timely manner uh, as determined by the uh, Office of Small Business Advocacy. So who determines at, uh, the, 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 the timeliness? And if you could uh, quantify the, the time, what is it, 30 days, 60 days? Um, is, is, is that even a factor? Thank you very much, Assemblywoman Thomas, for that question. Through you, Chair Flores, to Assemblywoman Thomas. Uh, I greatly appreciate the request for clarity. Um, there are instances where a small business may have had an ongoing issue for years. Um, we will probably not be able at that time to unravel all that has happened over the last couple of years. There are issues where they may have um, uh, uh, missed their opportunity of appeal, which puts us in a difficult place to try and resolve their issue because they have already missed the window. Uh, we can, of course, uh, beg forgiveness, um, but it will be limiting on what we can do. And we don't want to over promise and under deliver. Um, in addition, uh, uh, at the same time, I don't want to put a date because there are times when a small business may have a recurring issue. And that doesn't mean that the issue is stale. It means that there's an underlying cause that we haven't been able to get at. And so that's why it's left up to the discretion of the office, because we do understand that sometimes small businesses may have issues that it's not 30 days, right? Uh, or maybe they didn't even get notice. 
Uh, so we weave some flexibility there, but we do recognize that there are times when our office is not really going to be able to perform on behalf of the small business due to the timing of the request. Uh, the, the other thing to note is that the data we compile will provide you that information. So you will see where there were instances that we said there wasn't, uh, it, the request wasn't timely. Uh, and it will allow you uh, to come back to us and say, we want X, Y, and Z going forward. Thank you, ma'am. And um, Chair Flores, if I could um, have a follow-up question. Please follow up. Thank you, sir. Um, and Lieutenant Governor Marshall, um, the question, I mean, this is actually a technical question. Um, it's uh, section 13 when uh, we speak of, um, I, I apologize, section 12, uh, 12 subsection 2C, where um, um, data is being compiled by the authors. Um, uh, it's indicating that it may be compiled, um, but then in section 15, we are saying that um, that um, uh, a uh, okay that a transmittal would be submitted to the legislative council bill. What I want to know is, you know, may versus shall, basically. Um, if will the office compile this data? or will they not? Is it their discretion to do it? Thank you again, Assemblywoman Thomas. I appreciate the opportunity to clarify uh, through you, Chairman Flores, to Assemblywoman Thomas. Um, so with respect, section uh, 12 is dealing with a, a particular request for assistance and we may uh, compile statistical data in order to be able to properly respond to that request. In section uh, 15, when we say that we will submit a, uh, a report uh, to the Legislative Council Bureau, that indeed will show you data. It will show you things like a pie chart. It will show, tell you how many complaints that we received, what areas those complaints were in, how long it took us to uh, resolve those complaints, um, and what types of issues uh, were predominant or uh, one-offs. Yes, so that data will all be provided to you. I think that is an important part of the function of the Office of Small Business Advocacy because it allows you then to have the data to determine if there's anything you feel you might need to do so that we can be a better service to small businesses. And thank you, ma'am. I really do appreciate that clarification. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for asking the question. Perfect. Uh, next on the list we have Vice Chair Torres. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for the presentation. It's always great uh, to see you. Um, and so my question, I have two different questions. So I'll start with the first. I mean, I just want to understand what the relationship between this office will be with SBDC um, and with the Nevada Grow, which I know was uh, some, uh, Senator Neal's legislation in previous sessions. I, I kind of want to just understand that relationship and why, uh, why it's why we think it's important for us to have this under your office instead of other offices that work with business development. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Torres. And through you, Chairman Flores, to Vice Chair Torres, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, this is an important, this is a, 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 an important um, critical point as to why the office is, is necessary. So to answer your first question, the office itself um, is a single point of contact. So. If the small businesses reach out, reaches out to us, we may be, you need, we need to connect you with BNI. We need to connect you with the treasurer's office because you're eligible for CARES Act funding. We need to connect you with SBDC. So we are like the orchestra. All those agencies are various instruments of government and we are directing so that the uh, small business gets a complete um, service. 
With respect to why is it housed in our office as opposed to, for example, why isn't it at BNI or why isn't it at these other offices? Because our office will be solely focused on serving the small business. Um, if you have it, for example, in BNI, there's an innate um, potential for conflict because BNI also has certain um, obligations that it is required to perform. Um, and it must be um, beholden to those obligations, whereas we are only beholden to the small business. We are their advocate. And there is no place in government that is solely focused on serving the small business. They also have obligations that they are required by statute and functions that they are required. And we don't want the conflict. So our attention is solely towards that small business and connecting them with the right resources. We're their navigator. So we, we are the complement that can work with all those agencies. All those agencies are critical, um, but we are the connecting point. We answer the phone. Thank you. And another question if I may, Chair? Follow up, please. Thank you. Uh, I, I, thank you. I really appreciate that response. Um, and I have another question uh, on a separate issue for this legislation. I'm just wondering if there's any safeguards in there to ensure um, that this office can serve um, diverse communities, specifically when we're looking at language access. Um, a lot of the business owners in our community um, speak languages other than English. Um, and I think it's important that we have ways to continue to build those businesses um, in Nevada. And I know that there's a lot of uh, business owners that need help and need resources. So I'm just wondering what uh, effort this office will make to ensure that we're able to serve diverse communities and provide that, those language, those services in other languages. Thank you, I appreciate the, uh, the question and through you Chairman Flores to Vice Chair Torres. Um, that is also a very important point because one of the things you find when you're talking to small businesses is that um, uh, minority and women, um, it, it is an opportunity for those uh, uh, demographics to move ahead economically in life. It is a path and it is a particularly American path. And so um, the ability to serve diverse communities becomes very important. Um, we have a uh, large uh, Latino community in Nevada. We also have a growing uh, AAPI community in Nevada. We have multiple languages. Um, our expectation is that we would have one person serving Clark County only, one person serving the rest of Nevada. The person in Clark County, we will seek to find someone who is Spanish speaking, fluent Spanish speaking as a, opposed to myself. Um, and which, you know, I understand swear words, but, but so um, fluent Spanish speaker, even though I have to say to you that um, I recognize that there are many, many languages, okay? Uh, we have a large Ethiopian community. There are many, many languages. And um, so, uh, but uh, what I promise to you is that we will start uh, with a Spanish speaking person, um, but we will also seek to make sure that we can um, have interpreters and people who can um, help people in the language that they're most familiar with. Thank you, I appreciate that. All right. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Next, we'll go to Assemblywoman Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Lieutenant Governor Marshall, for bringing this forward. Um, I have two questions, but before I ask them, I would also like to make a push that the other individual in northern Nevada, or that will be set for the other areas of the state, also have that diversity background, because as you know, in our beautiful Washoe County area, we are also growing in so many different areas. And so I just would, would do that push in a subtle way if I could. Um, but more importantly, my question, has to do with section 10.3. It seems to be very straightforward and everything, but in a way to protect our state uh, with assisting the small businesses to understand their rights and responsibilities, is there any sort of protections for legal information or would it be um, if there are legal questions that somebody that is currently in a small business who's thinking about moving from a incorporated to unincorporated or vice versa, is there any sort of legal um, protections about advice being given that a small business might feel like was incorrect? Oh, thank you very much for the uh, uh, question, Assemblywoman Anderson. Through you, Chair Flores, to Assemblywoman Anderson. First off, no need to be subtle. Um, thank you very much for the push. 
And second, um, with respect to that, um, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to clarify. Rights and responsibilities uh, it often means something like, for example, you're required to renew your registration X time every year, uh, these kinds of things, and to make sure that we clarify what a business is obligated to do, okay? Um, when it, with respect to legal advice or financial advice or these things, um, having worked in areas before where I'm dealing with businesses, uh, it is always important to say that we cannot offer you legal advice. We cannot offer you financial advice, uh, and nor should you expect that. Um, our service is uh, free, so that advice which should not, you know, no, we don't do that. Um, and that's important to say also to protect the small business who might come away with uh, certain views or understandings that then might mislead them if they thought that we could provide that type of advice. Thank you. May I have a follow up, Mr. Chair? And thank you for that answer. Great answer. Please follow up. Thank you. So my other question actually is the report that is um, going to be given to the uh, legislature. And I, I'm so happy that that report will be coming and everything. But if there are items that are stopping some of our smaller businesses from growing, would a, a possible BDR be something that would come from your office or would this this agency basically, because although it's not a sub, not an agency yet, it could become one, um, might have that ability to bring forward their own BDRs or would, or bill draft requests, excuse me, or would that be something that, that your office at this time would try to take on for possibly future changes yes. to NRS? Thank you. Thank you very much, Assemblywoman Anderson. Through you, Chair Flores, to Assemblywoman Anderson. So uh, my office gets three BDRs um, annually, uh, biannually, and um, uh, it is my expectation that any kind of um, legislation would have to be a collaborative approach with the legislature. Um, really, what, what we would expect is that we provide you the information and then uh, your committees or your leadership or you can decide whether it needs to be acted upon. We are not trying to uh, do uh, usurp your role as the, the people who make decisions about um, what government ought to look like and how it can best serve uh, the people of Nevada and the small businesses in Nevada. But um, my feeling is that um, uh, the information will be useful to you. Of Thank course, uh, Assemblywoman Anderson, if you ever want me to bring a bill on your behalf, just call me. <laughs> but I only have three. <laughs> thank you so much for that clarification. And thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, Assemblywoman. Um, next, we'll go to Assemblywoman Brown May. Thank you, Chair Flores. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Marshall. It's great to see you today. I appreciate the presentation and I commend your efforts uh, to support support small business um, throughout Nevada. Uh, it has been a very trying time as you've talked about uh, throughout this last year. Uh, my questions are really clarifying uh, relative to the size identified as 100 employees. Over the course of the last year, it was my understanding that the Small Business Administration federally was using 500 employees as their threshold to identify small business. So I'm just curious to know um, why are we using 100 employees as opposed to that? And then um, would this also apply to nonprofit organizations? And then have we given any thought to multiple locations such as small restaurants that might have a less than 100 employees at each of their locations, but would overgo that threshold if you add them together? Thank you. Um, thank you, Assemblywoman Brown May for that question. I appreciate it. Through you, Chair Flores, to Assemblywoman Brown May. Um, we used 100 uh, in part because there are different um, uh, numbers that the feds use for different programs. But yes, uh, I, I am aware that they have moved to 500. Nevada, however, has not. Um, in fact, uh, the majority, I think about 90, 89%, please don't hold me to that number because I don't have it with me, of our small businesses are 20 employees or less. Um, so uh, uh, in order to really serve small businesses, which is our focus, and to recognize that we are using our resources in um, 
the best way possible to provide that service is why we put a limit on the number. Now, when you start talking about a, co a company, um, so my first job was at a donut shop uh, called Donuts and Things. By the way, I don't eat donuts. Um, you want to talk to me about that later, you can, except I do eat Steve Yeager's donuts. But uh, it, uh, um, so they had, he had six uh, six, you know, donut shops in uh, the town in which I was uh, born and raised. And so he would then be a single business, right, with his six shops. But a different thing altogether, my father once had a service station in uh, Texaco. I don't know if you remember it. Anyway, he had that service station. Well, that was a franchise, right? So my father would have been a single owner, but no, we would not serve Texaco as a small business, just saying. So you get the, the, the play there, the back and forth, right? Uh, I do use uh, gas, but don't eat a lot of donuts. There you go. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Chair, one follow-up? Follow-up, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to follow on uh, my colleagues' comments um, and, and just um, offer my own push as we work with small businesses. One of the focuses as of late has been encouraging people with disabilities to start micro-businesses. So plain language um, would be something to consider as you work on some of the support material as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Assemblywoman Brown May. Through you, Chair Flores, to Assemblywoman Brown May, I forgot to answer that yes, nonprofits are included. Um, so, uh, and yes, we will seek to serve all small businesses uh, uh, as as the state of Nevada serves all its people. So. And thank you, Lieutenant Governor. I'll be sure that Assemblyman Yeager um, knows that you did a quick shout out to his donuts. Um, next, we have Assemblyman Matthews, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, oops, I lost my video there for a second. Can you all see and hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, good morning, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, my question is, is for you in Section 10, um, the bill spells out a number of provisions for identifying you know different uh, problems and concerns that businesses face regarding you know laws and regulations uh, it's not made explicit in there but i'm wondering whether part of um, the function would be to actually uh, promote or advocate for the the repeal of any of these regulations that are that are deemed problematic uh, and if so how that would play out what the, the this new office's function would be and perhaps um, um, advocating for the elimination of some regulations. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblywoman Math Matthews. Appreciate the question through you, Chair Flores, to Assemblywoman, Assemblyman Matthews. Um, uh, no, our office is not uh, seeking to tell the legislature what things they should or should not do. We are seeking to provide you information so that if you feel, for example, that a particular uh, regulation is uh, obsolete, or uh, that a different regulation needs to be in place, um, you may do that, you will have information on that. Let me give you an example. Uh, last session, a gentleman was trying to make um, spirits. Uh, he has a uh, business in uh, Gardnerville. Um, he, uh, however, due to the laws on our books, he could not import sherry in order to make port. So obviously that law must have been there from, uh, you know, Mark Twain's time. And uh, so um, he was able to get the law changed. But that's the kind of thing that you and I may or may not be aware of, right? And so you might find that information and then say, well, wait a minute, our laws need to be updated uh, or changed or our, uh, a variation put in, right? And so that we feel is your uh, your wheelhouse, and we will simply provide you the data. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Quick follow-up, if I may. Follow-up, please. Um, thank you. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, Section 13, which says that the Office of Small Business Advocacy, I think it's in the amended version now, may establish this education course. Um, and my apologies if you if you touched on this and I missed it, but who um, who would be the instructors for those course, would it be personnel, the office itself? What might that curriculum look like? What would determine uh, how that is all set up? Thank you. 
Uh, thank you very much, Assemblyman Matthews, for the question. Uh, through you, Chair Flores, to Assemblyman Matthews. Um, so we would work with the various agencies and also the various chambers to make sure that we had the proper speakers to provide a course that met the needs of our small businesses. Um, uh, I, normally, I um, uh, do not rely on myself as the expert in the room, but I like to gather people on a panel. Uh, maybe provide a series of panels that then um, create some dialogue and answers and things like that for uh, small businesses. Uh, when I was treasurer, I held conferences um, north and south in Nevada to connect small businesses to um, uh, investors uh, and also to talk to them about um, some of the things that they can do in terms of marketing. Those were incredibly successful and incredibly needed. Obviously, there's a different focus here um, but things like that where you bring in people who can speak to issues that uh, small businesses would like to hear about. Thank you so much. And next we have Assemblywoman Dickman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Assemblyman Matthews pretty much stole my question, so um, <laughs> I don't really think I have a follow-up, although I would make the comment that as a lifelong business owner and 23-year business owner in Nevada, I'd just like to emphasize how important it is that we make, I mean, this office seems to be being created to make the system easier to navigate. I think we should just make the system easier so we don't need this office. And, and, and one quick question, has anyone considered um, having an ombudsman to be a go-between between small businesses and big government? Thank you, Assemblywoman Dickman. I appreciate the question. And through you, Chair Flores, to Assemblywoman Dickman. Um, often uh, in other states, this position is called an ombudsman. Uh, so an advocate, a navigator, an ombudsman, I think the, the terms are used interchangeably. Obviously, if I can work myself uh, out of the need for the position, um, that is what we do as parents. We try to do that and then somehow find that we are never quite able to do that. Understand the, um, the thought and the passion behind that. Try to do the best job we can to, so that all our small businesses are served. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor. I appreciate that response, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Assemblywoman. Next, we'll go to Assemblyman Ellison. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I appreciate it. And I, I, I like the intent of the bill. I, I just have a few problems. Number one, some of the small businesses, most of the small businesses are actually from five to 15 or 20. And uh, item 13 says, uh, advocates shall establish and maintain an education course. Some of these businesses have real strict timelines just trying to survive. And I think the smaller ones are gonna have a real problem. That's one question. The other question I've got is when I talk to you, uh, Lieutenant uh, Governor, is the problem I've got is, is this an opt-in or opt-out bill? Because you said that the businesses do not have to comply with it, but if, if it's an opt-in, it's one thing, or if it's an opt-out, it's a whole different program. Could you answer that question? Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, uh, thank you so much for the question, Assemblyman uh, Ellison, and through you, Chair Flores, to Assemblyman Ellison. I really appreciate that. First off, the, with respect to the ability of a small business to even take time away from uh, a, a passion and a job like a small business, um, we understand that, which is why, uh, uh, I don't know, Assemblyman Ellison, if you're on Ways and Means, but which is why that in the um, fiscal note, you'll see there is travel so that we can go out into communities uh, to where small businesses are located and connect with them there. Uh, we think that that's very important. It's why that we work so hard to get the chambers to support us because we know we will be reaching out through the chambers to their um, small business members. Um, with respect to your second question, opt-in or, or opt-out, this is a um, available service. If you do not want to use it, you do not have to. If you do not need it, uh, thank goodness. 
Uh, if you do need it, um, you are welcome to call. There is absolutely no requirement on a small business by the creation of this office at all. Follow up, Mr. Chair. Follow up, please. Uh, uh, thank you. And, and I think that's important because, you know, some of the small businesses, that, like you said, are, are struggling. Uh, and, and I don't see some of them making it for the next five or six months. It's, uh, it's so devastating. And, and they're, they're just trying to make payroll right now that if nothing else. So I, I, I appreciate it. And, um, the biggest thing is, is we've got to get the economy back moving. And, and the biggest things I was worried about was 13. We just can't put any more restrictions at all on them. Cause if we do, then those that are struggling will, will just end up shutting the door. And I thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you, Assemblyman. Um, we'll go next to Assemblywoman Martinez. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, Lieutenant Governor. Governor. Um, so my question is, what's the um, screening process going to be like? Um, are they going to have to give their business name, or license? What are they going to have to do uh, for assistance? Thank you, Assemblywoman Martinez, uh, for the question through you, Chair Flores, to Assemblywoman Martinez. Um, there is a case management software that is currently used by the governor's office, the treasurer's office. It's actually used by over 50% of governors in this country, uh, and it is a constituent um, management software. Uh, we have been working with other states who provide this type of service, Tennessee, for example, Oregon, for example, uh, and trying to uh, make sure that the, the form that we would use uh, as uh, and set up that software as an intake would be the uh, most efficient way to make sure that we are getting the kinds of information that we need so that we can connect them to the assistance that they need. Um, so that software is called IQ. Um, and that, and uh, when we get in front of uh, Ways and Means, we will be discussing the Actually, because the governor and the treasurer already has it, it's become a lot cheaper for us to get it, which is a godsend. So, um, but we will be discussing that. Uh, what the software allows us to do is not only intake information, but then it allows us to the, com aggregate the data to provide you a report. Thank you. And um, I do have another question. Um, oh, okay. Can they qualify whether they have a license or not, a business license? Uh, thank you, Assemblywoman Martinez. Through you, Chair Flores, to uh, Assemblywoman Martinez. Absolutely not. One of the issues may be that they can't get their license. And that's why they're calling, to try and get off their feet. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, I was, uh, business called me from Baker, Nevada the other day. Um, she provides um, tax assistance. Uh, and every year uh, around January, she gathers all her, or December, she gathers all her information to apply to the Secretary of State's office and other offices so she can have all the certification that she needs to provide tax assistance to businesses. The only one that does it out there in Baker. Um, anyway, uh, uh, her stuff was held up. Um, so she actually current, currently, when she called us, cannot do business, right? Um, so she needs uh, her information. And so we had to connect her. Um, right now, we're able to do that, you know, she called me because I like Baker and she knew someone who knew me and that's the way it's currently working. This would formalize that process and make sure we have staffing and resources for that. But some businesses may be trying to get up and running in Nevada and unable to because they are um, running into obstacles and they don't know how to navigate those obstacles. Thank you very much for the information. Uh, thank you, Assemblywoman Martinez. If we could please go next to, I know Assemblywoman Thomas uh, wanted to do a follow-up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, I just wanted to um, uh, comment to uh, um, our Lieutenant Governor Marshall. Um, for a novice like myself, reading all of this and then you explaining it, um, I am I'm just impressed. And I want to thank you personally that um, this information for small businesses um, in order to grow and recover from where we uh, are presently, and especially in our urban uh, neighborhoods, especially in Black-owned businesses, where um, when I'm looking at the charts, 
um, we are underproducing, and a lot of it has to do is because um, we don't have that um, way of tapping into information, and this um, will allow um, those businesses that want to, especially minority women, um, um, black minority women that want to um, be able to open up a business. And um, it seems like this is a way of reaching out to help up um, our community. And I want to thank you again. This is really a good bill. Thank you so very, very much. And thank you, Assemblywoman. Um, at this time, I don't believe we have any additional questions. However, if I accidentally skip somebody, please unmute yourself and state your name for the record. Members, any additional questions? Assemblywoman Duran? Yes, thank you. Sorry for the late question. Um, you just mentioned that basically that uh, there may be some help for people that don't have their license. Do Are you going to uh, help recommend where they can get help? Uh, I guess that's my question. Would would they be uh, available for your um, assistance in, the, in, in getting their license? Yes, thank you, Assemblywoman Duran, through you, Chair Flores, to Assemblywoman Duran. Yes, that's that's an important question. So, yes, we would make sure that uh, they knew where to go. Um, but let me give you another example. Um, we had a gentleman call who was trying to get a mortgage license. Um, he hadn't heard in 60 days and, and didn't know what was going on. Well, it turned out that the gentleman in BNI who was uh, processing that application took another job. And so then his the pile of work went to a new fellow who was um, overwhelmed, right? And had and couldn't, it was trying to get through um, the workload. Uh, so we made sure that they found his application. We got it processed. But let's say a business comes and says, well, this is what I'm doing, but somehow I don't know, I can't start yet. We understand that they would probably need to go to SBDC and get some counseling there, right? So we would connect people to the right places. Um, a lot of times your small business owner has expertise in something, uh, one of my sisters, I have many, so there's too many stories to tell, but one of my sisters uh, fixes people's wells. Um, she is a hydrologist by uh, by trade. Um, as long as you promise not to tell her, she's a terrible business person. And so, you know, she I mean, she just has no idea where to go, right? But she's very good at what she does in terms of fixing wells. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblywoman. I wanted to make sure you didn't have a follow-up. Seeing none. Members, any additional questions? <laughs> Perfect. Members, thank you for your questions this morning. Um, if for whatever reason something sparks your interest, we can always get it at the uh, once our, our Lieutenant Governor comes back uh, to wrap up the presentation. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and invite those wishing to speak in support. Uh, I noticed that we have some folk logged in. Um, so we could please start with those who are joining us virtually. And if we could please go to uh, Mr. Peter Guzman first, testifying in support of Assembly Bill 184. Mr. Guzman, um, welcome. Um, Chair, uh, Chair Flores, if I could just interrupt, I have to be on the floor on the Senate side. So if it's okay, if I can have my staff, Christina Lopez, if there are any follow-ups and also to help um, provide the closing remarks, would that be okay with you? Lieutenant Governor, I thought you were gonna take your laptop onto the floor and do both things at once. <laughs> yeah, you're the only person that can pull that off. <laughs> uh, thank, thank, you, thank you for your presentation this morning, Lieutenant Governor. Absolutely. Thank you again. And, and whatever follow-up questions, should we have any, I'll make sure they get to you through uh, Ms. Christina Lopez. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, members. I really appreciated you allowing me to speak this morning. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and if we could go back to those wishing to testify in support of Assembly Bill 184, and we'll start off with Mr. Guzman. Good morning, sir. Good morning, uh, Peter Guzman, for the record, president of the Latin Chamber of Commerce. And uh, it's a privilege and an honor to always uh, be able to give some comments and testify before you. And thank you all, each and every one of you for everything that you do for our communities. Um, I am in uh, favor of this. Uh, obviously, uh, the Latin Chamber, we're very passionate about small business. We know where the job creators come from. 
We know how we're going to get out of this pandemic, and that is through entrepreneurship and, and on the backs of small business owners and risk takers each and every single time. So anytime there's a resource or additional resource for them, uh, we, we will stand by it and I will be wholeheartedly for it. Furthermore, uh, in Las Vegas, um, I, I want to say I appreciate uh, Lieutenant Governor's uh, willingness to work with the Latin Chamber of Commerce and Christina um, because we know that, especially in Las Vegas, uh, especially over the last five years, the majority of the small business uh, that have been open have been uh, Latino owned businesses, uh, thriving and thriving really, really good in Las Vegas. Um, and, and a lot of them don't understand that through offices like this, through resources like this, they, they don't realize that they can expand and do things a little bit better um, uh, and even grow their business even more. So we will be working closely with this office to make sure that that happens. I appreciated so much the comments earlier uh, by Vice Chair uh, Torres on the language barriers. Uh, we also know that there's a trust issue and a lot of, a lot of these uh, incredible entre Hispanic entrepreneurs uh, get a little nervous because of immigration issues. So uh, I look forward to working closely with this office to let all the businesses know, including the Hispanic owned businesses, that this is an office of resource. This is an office to help them improve the way they do business so that they can do the thing that they wanna do most. And that is expand and create more jobs for this wonderful community. Thank you so much for allowing me to, the moment to speak, uh, Mr. Flores. Uh, thank you, Mr. Guzman. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you for your work. Uh, before we continue with those wishing to testify in support of Assembly Bill 184, I did notice that we had Mr. Michael Brown um, try to jump into the conversation. I, my understanding is that you were not necessarily here to testify in support of our position, but rather uh, to provide some additional context. Uh, is that correct, Mr. Brown? It is, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if we could uh, temporarily suspend uh, our, our testimony in support of Assembly Bill 184, and if we could go back to the presentation so that Mr. Michael Brown can provide additional information to the committee. Please, Thank Mr. Brown, are ready? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Michael Brown, Executive Director of the Governor's Office of Economic Development. Lieutenant Governor serves on the Board of uh, Economic Development. We have legislation also pending that will have Director Reynolds and the Department of Business and Industry uh, join the Board of GOAD so that we can address business as one unified group. The Secretary of State also serves on the Board of GOAD. Um, Giving uh, Lieutenant Governor leadership in this area was something that was recommended uh, by SRI and Nevada's plan for resiliency and recovery, the economic plan that we gave the legislature at the start uh, as part of our recovery effort. Um, this is uh, something very important. The treasurer and I led the effort on relief programs, uh, the PETS program and the Craig program. And in that we discovered uh, really the, the small nature of, of small business, the micro nature of small businesses and how much uh, they can need extra assistance, extra coaching, extra help from, from state government. Uh, to make those programs work, we had to turn, we turned to the chambers, Peter Guzman's organizations and others because those small businesses are busy running a small business and filling out a PETS grant, filling out a, uh, a Craig grant, you know, was beyond the capacity of many of those businesses. So adding more capacity in this area will give resiliency to the Nevada economy and help us in the long term. Uh, Mr. Ellison asked the question about the size of small businesses. 86% um, of, our, of our businesses, if we measure by worksite, employment by worksite in Nevada are less than 20%, 20 or less than 20 employees. 95% of our worksites uh, are less than 50 employees. 97% of our work sites are less than 100 employees. And at that point, you start to break into larger companies, like a cashman equipment or even a small mine or a small gaming company uh, when you go above 100. So 100 is a good place to define that for this program. And um, anyway, we, uh, the governor has uh, proposed this in his state of the state. He'd also suggested it in his last state of the state. And I wish we'd have that extra capacity when we had to roll out the relief programs. 
and uh, I can answer any other questions. But like I say, this is something that was supported by Stanford Research Institutes uh, that the Lieutenant Governor uh, provide leadership in this area. You know, Lieutenant Governor mentioned the concept of an orchestra and, you know, Department of Business and Industry is a, is a very large department. Uh, you know, it's almost the percussion side of, uh, of an orchestra. And my little office has a small business responsibility. We're kind of the cellos, I guess. And then there's other parts of state agencies that make up the rest of the string section. Um, this office will be well, will provide an opportunity to to just make sure we're all we're all playing uh, playing the playing the music the way we're supposed to because we'll have feedback from the public as to when we're when we're off key and Lieutenant Governor can step in and kind of help us at that point. So with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I don't believe we have any additional questions for you, but I wanted to make sure that we went to you. I know that you you made the effort to join us this morning, so I wanted to make sure you had an opportunity to provide your testimony to the committee. Mr. Thank Brown, you. I could just have you sit tight and um, in case anybody else uh, throughout the presentation or opposition support wish to address any questions to you, we'll come back. Thank you, Mr. Brown. So at this time, I'd like to continue with those wishing to testify in support of Assembly Bill 184. And I am again checking those of you that logged in virtually. Um, I believe we have Mr. Uh, Terry Reynolds. Uh, good morning, sir. Welcome. Good morning, Chair Flores. Uh, Terry Reynolds, uh, Director for the Department of Business and Industry. Uh, we strongly support uh, AB 184. Uh, we've had uh, multiple conversations with Lou. Lieutenant Governor's Office. Uh, also, I want to echo uh, the comments from Director Brown. Uh, he has uh, actually put it into to a good uh, literary picture uh, of what is happening in the state. But it's true that we want to make sure that people don't fall through the cracks, that business people don't fall through the cracks, that they're able to uh, access uh, a single point of contact if they have an issue or a problem, uh, even with one of our agencies or something within the state. Uh, we want those people to be able to have the, the contacts and the resources to be able to solve their issues and solve them in quickly. Uh, we're not perfect. Uh, our people sometimes make mistakes or uh, they get uh, uh, passed over and we wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. So we need that feedback. We need that communication to make sure that we're successful. A lot of times it's really just the matter of, of resources and having additional resources in this area, as Director Brown indicated, really will help all of us in terms of solving that issue and being re more responsive to our businesses. Uh, it's very essential, uh, I think, to be successful as a state to be able to have those network and that contacts to be able to help our small business. So with that, uh, I want to thank uh, Lieutenant Governor for uh, this uh, piece of legislation and uh, tell the, the committee that uh, on behalf of business and industry, we greatly support uh, this piece of legislation and it will really add to the toolbox to be able to support our small business within the state. So thank you very much for this opportunity, Chair Flores. And thank you for joining us and appreciate you working alongside of our Lieutenant Governor and Ms. Christina Lopez on this issue. Um, we'd like to continue with those wishing to testify in support of Assembly Bill 184. Uh, excuse me, I, I just noticed that we have a question. Oh, understood. Uh, for, for Mr. Brown, we'll have some questions for you at the conclusion of support opposition and neutral. Um, I don't know if you can see the comment put uh, on the chat by Mr. Uh, uh, by Assemblyman Ellison. We could address that at the conclusion of support opposition neutral. Thank you, Mr. Brown. So we'll continue with those wishing to testify in support of Assembly Bill 184. Um, I don't believe we have anybody else joining us via uh, uh, Zoom. If we could go to the phone lines, broadcast, please. To testify in support of Assembly Bill 187, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller, with the last three digits of 020, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good morning, Chair Flores and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Mary Beth Sewald, spelled S-E-W-A-L-D. I'm the president and CEO of the Vegas Chamber of Commerce. 
The chamber is is also in great support of the creation of the Lieutenant Governor's Office of Small Business Advocacy. Um, and we especially appreciate the Speaker of the Assembly, the Assembly Majority Leader, and the Lieutenant Governor for bringing this bill forward. As you all know, Nevada's small businesses are absolutely the backbone of our economy, as has been stated already. Their success as job providers is incredibly essential to our economic recovery. Um, as the state's largest and broadest based business association, 85% of our members are small business owners. We have small businesses in every sector of the state's economy. Um, and according to the Small Business Administration, small businesses employ more than 42% of Nevada's private sector employees. Many of the provisions in the bill align with the request that the Vegas Chamber receives from its, its members about assistance with local governments and state agencies, including accessing resources, solicitation of feedback on regulations, and then of course, timely responses from state and local governments. So a centralized approach as proposed by the bill will help small businesses as they navigate the challenges that come with owning and operating a business. And the, re the reality is that small businesses have very limited resources and time, and many of them are just struggling to keep their doors open and, and make payroll so they can keep our Nevadans working. So this type of assistance is definitely going to give them a better chance at navigating the complexities of state and local governments to give them answers and to give them the help that they need. So the passage of this bill is absolutely an important step to help small business owners and entrepreneurs succeed. Um, during these challenging times, the more resources and assistance that we can provide to Nevada's small business owners, the faster we can get to, we can work together to help rebuild our economy as we hopefully emerge from the economic and health turmoil that has been created by COVID-19. So uh, Chair Flores, I wanna thank you again, uh, and we urge you all to support this important piece of legislation. Thank you. And we'll continue on the lines uh, for those wishing to testify in support of Assembly Bill 184. Uh, while I am not trying to in any way uh, limit anybody from speaking in support, uh, if somebody has already stated uh, your argument or support, um, we would always appreciate a quick ditto and saying, I agree. Um, with that, we'll continue with the phone lines broadcast. Support for Assembly Bill 184. Caller, with the last three digits of 496, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good morning, Chair Flores and members of the committee. My name is Alexandra Daslich, and I'm the Director of Government Affairs for the Nevada Restaurant Association. Uh, I want to uh, ditto the remarks of the Vegas Chamber and uh, urge you to pass AB 184. And thank you for your time. And thank you for joining us this morning. We'll continue with those wishing to testify in support of Assembly Bill 184. Caller, with the last three digits of 114, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Greeting Chair Flores, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Amber Stidham, that's A-M-B-E-R, last name Stidham, S-T-I-D-H-A-M, and I'm testifying on behalf of the Henderson Chamber. Uh, we represent more than 1,800 businesses, of which 87% of those employ 50 people or less. And to echo uh, some of my business um, stakeholder representatives, we too are in great support of AB 184. We really thank the Lieutenant Governor and the Speaker for bringing this bill back for discussion from last session. We were certainly supportive of it then. We certainly are even more supportive of it now. Prior to this pandemic, our small business members, including many of our entrepreneurs and startups, already had a challenging time navigating the state's regulatory system, not to mention all of the resources and support our state may provide to them. Now, when you fast forward to today, that need is really even greater. So we look forward um, and urge your support of this bill. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll continue with support for Assembly Bill 184. Caller, with the last three digits of 407, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Caller, with the last three digits of 407, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. 
You will have two minutes and may begin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Government Affairs Committee. My name is Randy Thompson, R-A-N-D-I-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. I'm State Director of the National Federation of Independent Business. NFIB has been around since 1948, and we're the only statewide association representing specifically small business. In fact, 100% of my members are small business. I want to ditto Amber and Mary Beth, as well as uh, my other uh, business associates in support of this bill. Um, now more than ever, small business needs help, and I appreciate the Lieutenant Governor. Um, I supported her bill last session, definitely support it again this session, and I thank you, the Speaker, for bringing this forward. Thank you. And thank you. Next caller wishing to testify in support of Assembly Bill 184. Caller. With the last three digits of 131, three, please one. slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Uh, Chair Flores, members of the Assembly Government Affairs Committee, my name is Connor Kane, C-O-N-N-O-R-C-A-I-N. -N -N -N. I'm testifying in support of AB 184 on behalf of LVGEA. Um, First, I want to start off by saying that I'm not not as brave as the Lieutenant Governor uh, who, who did define LVGEA. I thought she did did a fan, fantastic job, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, we, we'd like to thank the Lieutenant Governor and, 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 the, and the sponsors of this legislation, including Speaker Frierson and Majority Leader Benitez Thompson, for bringing this important bill to support small businesses. And in the interest of time, I'll just, just say that LVGEA has submitted a letter of support for AB 184 that I'd encourage you to read if you have the opportunity to do so. Uh, thank you again for allowing me to testify in support of AB 184. And thank you for joining us this morning. Next caller wishing to testify in support of Assembly Bill 184. Caller, with the last three digits of 529, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good morning. This is Ken Evans, K-E-N-E-V-A-N-S. Here to support AB 184 on behalf of the Urban Chamber of Commerce. Uh, what I'll say is that the lion's share of our members are what we would call small businesses, but in many cases they're micro businesses, meaning they have anywhere from one to five employees. So having this office of a small business advocate would be integral to the potential for our businesses, especially the smallest ones, to compete and succeed. Uh, we really like the fact that this office would be both responsive as well as proactive. Uh, responsive in terms of navigating uh, different issues and then proactive in terms of providing the legislature and others with information about systemic things that may be in need of improvement and change. Uh, we definitely want to say thank you to the Lieutenant Governor as well as to the Speaker for bringing this bill back. Uh, we too, much like many of our business association colleagues, supported this bill last session. Uh, we definitely support it again this session, and we appreciate you, Chair Floors, and the committee, uh, if you would provide your support as well. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us this morning. We'll continue with the next caller wishing to testify in support of Assembly Bill 184. With the last three digits of 550, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. My name is Ann Silver, A N N S I L V E R. Good morning, Chair Gonzalez and members of the committee. I serve as the CEO of the Reno Sparks Chamber of Commerce that works on behalf of over 2,000 businesses, 75% of which employ less than 50 employees. 80,000 of whom are Washoe County residents. The pandemic has undermined the stability and sustainability of small businesses that continue to struggle to fully open their doors, retain customers, and find new ones. The office proposed by this legislation will create one statewide bilingual resource for small businesses. It will give voice to the important role played by small businesses, all of which provide the goods and services we all rely upon in our daily lives. As our economy grows and diversifies, we can't leave behind the small businesses that need information and a stable advocate for their sustainability and success. The Reno Sparks Chamber of Commerce fully supports Assembly Bill 184 with thanks to Lieutenant Governor Kate Marshall, 
Speaker Frierson and this entire committee. Thank you. And thank you for joining us this morning. Next caller wishing to testify in Assembly Bill 184. Caller with the last three digits of 523, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. My name is Tom Clark. That's T-O-M-C-L-A-R-K. I'm calling today on behalf of the Nevada Outdoor Business Coalition. Uh, we do want to thank the Lieutenant Governor and Speaker Frierson for bringing forward Assembly Bill 184. And instead of reading my three pages of script, I'll simply say, me too, and ditto. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you for joining us this morning. Next caller wishing to testify in Assembly Bill 184. For the newcomers, to testify in support of Assembly Bill 184, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller, with the last three digits of 635, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Caller, with the last three digits of 635, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Hello, come in, come in. Hi, good morning. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. All right, guys. Well, uh, I'll make it real quick. Uh, John Carlo, uh, J-O-H-N-C-A-R-L-O. -O. Um, I'm calling you guys to ask to end the maskless mandate. I'm calling on you guys to get the governor to pick up his phone and my county commissioners uh, so, so to pick up their right phone. Right now we're in support of Assembly Bill 184. I think you're wishing to speak in public yes. comment. Oh, understood. You're right, so you're right, I am. No, no worries, so do me a favor. Um, go ahead and uh, we'll have you call back during public comment. Right now we're still in support of Assembly Bill 184, um, but feel free to call back yes. during public comment. We'll, we'll get there in a few minutes. Um, I guess if you could yes. go to the next call to testify in Assembly Bill 184. To testify in support of Assembly Bill 184, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits of 528, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Liz McMiniman, L-I-Z-M-A-C-M-E-N-A-M-I-N, with the Retail Association in Nevada. <clears throat> I would like to thank the Lieutenant Governor and the speaker and the majority leader for bringing this piece of legislation forward. Small business is the backbone of our, our economy in Nevada, and these businesses are providing a real living for their owners, their families, and their employees. These businesses are critically important in the fact that they provide competition to the larger companies while providing Nevada residents with a different and more diverse choice of suppliers, and their money goes directly into our local economies. 184, uh, AB 184 will create the Office of Small Business Advocacy to aid these vital businesses to obtain the assistance they need in working with the many different local and state agencies that regulate their businesses. This task can sometimes prove very difficult and may discourage a prospective entrepreneur from achieving his or her goals. The Retail Association supports the creation and would like to thank the sponsors again for this bill. And I would like to thank you at this time, Matt, uh, Mr. Chair, for allowing me to speak. Thank you. We could go to the next caller wishing to testify in, uh, in support of Assembly Bill 184. Chair, there are no more callers in support at this time. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite those wishing to speak in opposition to Assembly Bill 184. 
to testify in opposition to Assembly Bill 184, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in opposition at this time. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite those wishing to speak in the neutral position for Assembly Bill 184. Let's define the neutral position for Assembly Bill 184. Please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in neutral at this time. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lopez, at this time, we can go back to you if you have any, any closing remarks. Uh, no, thank you, Chair Flores. I just want to thank the committee for giving your time and attention to this bill. Uh, thank you to all who called in in support. We appreciate you. Um, and any other questions, uh, please let us know. But otherwise, we appreciate your time. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and close out the hearing on Assembly Bill 184. Members, thank you for all your questions. And uh, please feel free to continue your dialogue with the Lieutenant Governor and Speaker Frierson. Um, at this time, I'd like to open it up for public comment. Broadcast, if we could go to the phone lines, please. To take your place in the public comment queue, please press star nine now. Caller, with the last three digits of 635, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Caller with the last three digits of 635, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Hey guys, uh, my name is JC, uh, J O H N C A R L O. I will need to be stopped because I don't have a timer on me, so go ahead and stop me when you need to do that. But um, I'm very frustrated with our governor's office. I cannot get them to call me back. Um, I try to file an ethics complaint, I can't find their website. But I want uh, massive mandates to be stopped. I want uh, immigration. Uh, federal agencies to impose uh, taxes on on these unions who are hiring illegal immigrants that are campaigning for some of you guys. Illegal immigrants that are taking American jobs. And I have contacted ICE, DHS, the attorney's office, and we need to look into this. And you guys need to, uh, you guys need to do a better job. A lot of these uh, services um, are falling short. The governor's office. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? The school district. Um, last place in America. I'm trying to talk to federal agencies, and I can't get through. So our federal money is not going in the right places, guys. I need your help with that. My email, for those who have a pen, is jcc37 at icloud.com. I want to endorse you. I want to say good things about you guys, so you've heard my voice. My email, jcc37 at icloud.com. Please uh, reach out to me about how we're going to improve uh, the Silver State. I do thank you very much for this time. God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us this morning. If we could please go to the next caller wishing to test, excuse me, to uh, uh, provide public comment. Chair, the public line is open and working, but there are no more callers at this time. Thank you. At this time, we'll go ahead and close out public comment. Members, thank you for your participation this morning. Uh, I know we had quite a bit of questions. Um, I will state, though, however, uh, as we move along, we may have to move our start time because we're moving too close into our, our floor start time. So we may have to start moving into a 9 a.m. starting moving forward. But we'll, we'll give feedback to the members just so you know. Um, members, I want to remind you tomorrow we have Assembly Bill 211 that's going to be heard, uh, presented by Assemblywoman Hauregui. I mentioned that just so that if you have any questions, you'd like to reach out to her, that you give yourself an opportunity to familiarize yourself with that hearing, uh, with that bill, excuse me. With that, thank you, members, again. This meeting's adjourned.